In this video, I'm going to go over the difference between malloc and calloc in C. So malloc and calloc are both functions that dynamically allocate memory for us on the heap. The difference is that calloc will set that memory to zero first, and malloc will not. So let's go over the difference with an actual example. Let's say that we're going to use malloc, and we're going to have a pointer to a dynamically allocated array of integers. And we'll say that array is equal to malloc will allocate space for a thousand integers. So we'll say a thousand times size of int, because the way malloc works is it takes in one argument, and that argument is the number of bytes to allocate. So a thousand times the number of bytes in each integer will give us the number of space needed for a thousand integers on the heap. And then what I'm going to say is let's do a loop that's going to go from zero to a thousand and just output the value that's currently stored at each position in memory. So we're going to say like percent D array I, and we're just going to do basically an output as an integer of everything in that memory right now from going from zero to a thousand. And after we're done that, we can free the space that we allocated for the array. And we'll just do a printf here of a new line at the bottom just to format our output a little bit nicer. And because I'm using malloc and calloc, I'm going to have to include stdlib.h because they're in there. So we'll run this now and see what we get. So we run this now, we get a bunch of zeros. And this actually isn't too surprising. We said that calloc sets things to zeros first. So we, maybe we expected that with calloc, but not malloc. But this isn't too surprising because our program hasn't done anything on the heap yet. Our program hasn't written anything to, to memory just yet. And so, you know, the fact that memory is zeros right now isn't that surprising. But what if our program was using the heap previously? So what if our program was allocating and freeing all kinds of things on the heap? Then if we were to run malloc, would that space also be zeros? Would it still be zeros? Let's just do an experiment to see. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to include time.h because I want to use random numbers. And I'm going to seed the random number generator before I start using it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually allocate a thousand times a bunch of random, randomly sized things on the heap. So I'm going to say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than a thousand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a size. So I'm going to say int size is equal to zero. And I'm going to say int star junk. And this is going to be a pointer that I'm going to use for each one of these things I dyna dynamically allocate. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to randomly determine a size with which to allocate space for on the heap. So rand is going to return a big random integer and modulus 16,000 is going to take it and do a division and return the remainder. So this is going to be some big integer. And we're going to say, what is the remainder of that big integer? If you do a modulus operator and, and you get the remainder after dividing by 16,000. And so this is going to give us basically some random large integer between zero and 16,000. Then I'm going to allocate space on the heap for that random thing. So I'm going to say junk is equal to malloc, and I'm going to say size times size of int. So this just gave me like a random number to allocate space for. Now I'm saying go get me space on the heap with that random size for a bunch of random integers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to populate that space on the heap with a bunch of junk data. I'm just going to stick like completely random integers in there and then we'll just fill the heap with junk data like that. So I'm going to say junk J is equal to rand. And then I'm going to say free junk here. So this here, what it's doing is it's going over that space that we allocated on the heap that has a given size that we randomly generated. And we're saying from zero until that size, take every, you know, element in that ran randomly allocated array, that, ran that dynamically allocated array, and fill it with some junk data. And then we'll free it. And we do this a thousand times. So we're going to completely fill a heap with all kinds of junk data, basically. So now if I run this here, and we'll do a clear, and we'll run it again, we'll compile it again, we'll run it again. What I'm going to get is that now my malloc here that allocated the space for the array, when I go to print it out, there's all kinds of random junk in there. And this could be a problem because if we allocate space for, you know, something we, we need to uh, work with in our program on the heap and we don't know what's in that space, we might be performing operations with that data, 
not realizing that it's not initialized to zero or it's not what we think it might be. And so this is a bit of a problem with using malloc. As long as we're aware of it, perhaps it's not a problem, but we definitely need to be aware of it. Now with calloc, what it's going to do is it's going to set this data to zero for us. So calloc works slightly differently in terms of how it's called. You just say calloc. And with calloc, there's actually two arguments. The first argument is going to be sort of like the count or the, the number of things to allocate space for. And then the second argument is the size of each one of those things. So you say like a thousand, and then we need space for a thousand integers. So it'd be like a thousand is the number of things we need space for, the count of things we need space for, and size of integer is the size of each one of those things, because in this case, it's integers that we want. And so with calic, what's going to happen now, I'll do a clear and we'll recompile here. With calic, what's going to happen is it's going to set that space to zero for us. And that's excellent because now we've we've now got space that we have can guarantee is already set to zero for us. Now, the only thing is that calic comes at a bit of a cost. Calic does have to actually set that space to zero. And that does take non-trivial time to do that. So let's actually do an experiment. Let's do a bit of a bit of a performance test here. And let's compare the performance of malloc and calloc. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this clock type here and I'm going to have tick and talk. And what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to record without getting into it much. I'm essentially going to record the time before and after we call malloc and calloc. And I'm going to do a subtraction of the, the uh, before time from the after time to determine how long it took to run each function. And we'll do a performance test. So I'm going to say here, tick is equal to clock to sort of record the before time. Then I'm going to say array is equal to malloc. And we're going to allocate space for, let's say, like a million integers. So like a lot of integers here. And then I'm going to say talk is equal to clock, which essentially records the after time. And then I'm going to do a printf. And I'm going to say printf. And I'll say like malloc percent F and then I'll say S. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do double conversion talk minus tick divided by, and I'm going to divide it by clocks per second. So divided by clocks per second. And then I'm going to free the array. And what this is doing is it's running malloc and we're basically recording the before time and the after time. And then we're, we're subtracting the before time from the after time divided by clocks per second here. And that's going to give us the amount of time in seconds that it took to run the malloc function. And then we're going to do the same thing. I'm actually going to copy and paste. We're going to do the exact same thing with calloc. So we'll run calloc now and we'll do a test of how long it takes to run calloc. And we'll just say calloc here instead. And I'll put a new line after these, just that way it looks a little bit nicer. So new lines after these, just to make it look a bit nicer. Okay, so we'll clear GCC output, uh, just to compile it, and then we'll run it. And we get that calloc is taking way longer than malloc. So look at how much longer it takes. It's basically 100 times longer than malloc in terms of how long it takes, if you do a comparison here. And that's because what's happening is calloc is having to set a million places in memory to zero. And that's not free. That does take time. And so while calloc does guarantee that the space is going to be set to zero, it does come at a performance cost. So we just want to be aware of that difference as well. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.